problems of owning a cat is like when they're really peaceful in your lap and you just don't want to move so you either so you either will not piss for two hours or just take a nap with them and i need to make a video and i need to stop zooming in one of <laughs> maybe i'll just sit here for a few hours hello everybody um welcome to november favorites Ooh. Just walk me cut up. Anyway, um, I'm sure you've noticed by the elongating turtleneck that it is winter and it's bloody freezing in Shanghai. It's very cold. I mean, I already pulled out my Kathmandu to wear and I don't know what I'm going to do for the rest of winter. So, anyway, obviously, um, first favorite song, kick out, get out, get out, get out, what are you doing, what are you doing? <laughs> I guess I'll just have to do the video like this, but obviously first favorites of the month is these bangs though. So I got bangs um, after much deliberation and and two years of waiting. I finally decided to get bangs because I remember when I was younger, I always wanted bangs, but I always thought they made me look really stupid because for some reason, I would always get really... Th mm, see, they keep spitting. I would always get really thick ones and I just look like a mushroom. But now um, we've realized the trend of getting thin bangs and it's been lovely so um it's the maintenance is crazy so when i went i asked for a thin layer long bangs with like long sides as well but like look at it it just keeps splitting so i think i might get it thicker and also get it trimmed but oh when you get bangs please think about it <laughs> if it suits your face or not um i've actually gotten a lot of compliments so i'm quite happy with it but it's just the maintenance is bloody annoying so i'll probably leave my bangs down maybe like two to three times a week but it is long enough for me to tie it back up into a ponytail which is what i like but it is also long enough that i have to always curl it a little bit otherwise it tickles my eyes so it always splits in the wind like i don't know how anyone walks around with bangs that's why when i'm out or when i know i'm gonna be outdoors for a long time i will always do it up and also like it's probably just because it's thin but like it keeps splitting and it's so annoying like it took me 10 minutes just playing with my hair to get used to this video you're so comfortable aren't you you're so comfortable <sighs> so anyway yeah look i just have to keep checking myself also, it gets very oily, like I've been getting quite a few pimples up there. And then also, like, my hair doesn't really get oily, so I'll probably wash it, like, maybe uh, twice a week. But my bangs, if I want to leave them out, after half a day, like, I need to wash them. Because I'm always touching them and, like, fidgeting with them. So, it is so high maintenance. It's more, e it's even more high maintenance than a baby. So, okay, maybe not that. But I definitely think about it before you get bangs. Just having a really bad bang day, so... They go, they out. <laughs> he sat down on me. No, I got a video to make. You better get up now. Okay, so on to the favorites. You haven't seen this before, but I would like to formally invite you to my perfume station. We'll give you a little close up of it. I like to put it on this terracotta thing, and then I just got some small Chloe ones DKNY Apple, Joe Malone, Vera Wang Princess, and Long Peratrice by DNG. The one that I wanted to talk about today is number three Long Peratrice. I've probably been using this for the past. Oh, five, six years. So the first time I ever bought it was when I went to Paris French Exchange because I couldn't find the perfume anywhere in Australia. Um, it's by Dolce & Gabbana, by the way. And when I went to the Sephora in Champs Elysees, I remember it so correctly. I saw the bottle and I was like, oh, I has to buy it now. So what it actually smells like to me, it smells for some reason it smells a bit watermelon, watermelon, watermelonly, definitely fruity and floral. But it's also it's very strong and it lasts so long. So wherever you spray, you will smell it for like the rest of the day. So usually one spray is enough. Oh, it's just every person that has come over to my house and smelled my perfumes, they all love this one. Like this is all their favorites. I smelled all the other ones from the collection and they just they smell nasty. So that is definitely um, the scent. I used to wear it religiously every day, but now I don't really wear perfume so much. But recently for the past week, I've been wearing this every day once again. We are now switching stations over to the candle area. I've never really talked about these candles, but... um. They're amazing. I don't really buy really expensive candles because like why would I pay $50 for a candle? But I always get gifted them which is like the best thing ever because I don't want to pay for it myself. Aside from Dip Tea Candle Mimosa, these are the most luscious smells that I've ever smelled. My friend went to Anthropology in America and every time she goes to Anthropology or she goes to America, she always brings me back a candle. Now these ones are Veluspa candles, Veluspa. And she's brought me back two and I equally love both of them. Like just look at the design of the jar. 
and then the patterns and then the lids it's just so gorgeous so this one I have already completely used that this is the first one she's ever got for me I'm like savoring this last centimeter of it it is the goji taro cash orange and I don't really like orange scents, but to me it doesn't really smell that orangey. It smells quite more grapefruity, but then also very, very sweet. It kind of reminds me of what Grounds of Alexandria smells like, that, like the candle area. It smells kind of like the acai berry candle that they have. This one that I'm burning right now, I think... I think this one might be more of a favorite than this one because the other one's not quite sweet. It's more rich. It's quite candy-ish. This one is the Sejo Persimmon. It's a coconut wax blend. So being a persimmon blend, it's obviously quite fruity, but it is definitely more softer. But with this scent, like it's not full on. Like the Velispa candles are not full on that you will smell it wherever you go. But once you step out of the room and then step back into the room, your room will definitely smell like it. And it's just a nice scent to keep throughout the day. I'll probably light it once every day just to keep my room smelling Nietzsche. Nice. Moving on once again onto another cubicle. Lately, I have had quite the love affair for dangly earrings. Now, I used to be obsessed with earrings and I used to wear them all the time. I would steer away from dangly earrings because I thought they made me look old and people would be like, oh, you're only a teenager. Do you think you're mature? But recently, I've been in love. So I thought I'd just show you a couple, ooh, a couple of my favorites. This one I've had for quite a few years. They're from Jolie and Dean in Melbourne. Um, they're quite heavy, so I wouldn't move around a lot. But they're just so luxurious and it's just so classy that... Um, I save them for special occasions and then the other ones. Let's take a peeky deek. So these ones I've had for so long and are probably the ones that I always wear because they're just so easy and casual. They're geometric gold and they're from Colette. They're very light and they just kind of give an edge to any outfit or if you just want to spice things up a little bit. So yeah, well, you can't really tell but that's what it looks like on an ear, not a cheek. These are another pair from Jolie and Dean. They're turquoise blue with gold. I got them for my birthday, I think my 18th birthday. So that's what they look like on the skin. And these ones are a bit, they're very light, these ones, which are good. And they bend, so they're not like a whole just stiff thing. These curtain tassel ones you might have seen in one of my recent videos. I just think they look so nice with the white crisp shirt. I would definitely wear this with something white and simple because it's so statement. Just look at the tassels and, you know, if you've got something on your face, you can just brush it off. Fringe is back and now we are in my kitchen slash living room slash my whole house. So we're going to open the fridge. It's not a food favorite. <laughs> in here, I keep some beauty products, namely face masks and eye roll on things. So recently, now that it's hit winter and I went to Beijing, my skin got so dry and I've had, had some troublesome skin where I've gotten just kind of little dots all over my head on the top because I had a shoot and the makeup that they put on was a whole day. It was for 16 hours and it wasn't my own foundation because I wanted a stronger coverage and it just really messed with my skin and it takes me like one to two months to recover. So what I've been doing is putting face mask on every single day and it honestly has helped heaps. So these ones I picked up in uh, Hong Kong at Sasa because China doesn't really have a lot of face masks and they're so much more expensive here. But Hong Kong just has a crazy amount so I picked these up. I've seen them before but I've never used them before. They're NMF Aquafy Mask, Aqua Ring, Medi Heal, Lion Friends. I just got them because I have the Lion Friends on it and I thought it was cute. And it actually has the Lion Friends on the mask, which is super cute. But yeah, so I've been putting one of these on every day. I like to keep them in the fridge because my face gets quite swollen in the morning when I wake up. Um, also, it, like my face gets really hot for some reason. So I just like to put it to cool down. And I also think when it's cold and straight out of the fridge, it de-swells my face as well. And good news is I have really sensitive skin and a lot of masks I can't use. But these ones I've had no problems with. And I think they've... I feel like they've cleared up my pimples a lot and my skin is not like dry and peeling anymore, which is pretty good. Okay, now we're gonna swivel like half a meter over into into my uh okay cat, don't even think about it. Into my makeshift closet and for a few of my clothing favorites. First one is a lot of people like will hate this or love it. It actually looks like I look like a yeti when I wear this, but it is just so outrageous and comfy and fluffy and screams winter like some people love it some people hate it it's from style nanda and i put i've been wearing this since autumn like either just under a dress or like for winter it's just, and it's got like really boxy sleeves it's a really boxy cut it has the click button so you can button it up but i just think it looks a little bit stupid buttoned up like I look like a snow cone, but like this, I like it and it's really warm and it's so soft and it's just really big knitting and I just, I, I love the style of it because it reminds me of my grandma's knitting and can you imagine the knitting needles that they would have used to make such a big knit, like the needles would have been like thick as. 
Also, something else from Zara. I've gotten quite a few compliments on these boots as well. When I saw them, I was like, yes. And they were so cheap as well. These are my brown camel saddle boots. They're kind of like the suede material all over. They have a silver inside zip. I would have preferred it if it was gold. I'm just not a silver hardware person. But um, heel is block heel, so comfortable. But you need to wear it in a bit first. And if you're wearing them all day, you will get tired feet. But you'll get used to it if you're like me and just wear them five days a week. I'll show, them, I'll show you what they look like on. <laughs> Ugh. Need to work on my stretching. That's what they look like on. They're a little bit slippery because they're like that plastic bottom. But I will definitely be wearing these throughout winter. I usually stick with my brown heel boots. But because these ones, um, they cut above your ankle and they're slim as well. You can wear them and they won't look like you have cankles. And they look really nice for like the natural denim dark colour. Why hello there. TV show recommendations for this month are Netflix available as well. I feel like I'm doing an ad for Netflix. Bates Motel. I've put off watching this thing for so long because the picture just didn't look inviting. I thought it was like a horror movie, a horror TV show. And then when I read the synopsis, it just wasn't interesting. So it is uh, kind of like based off the thriller movie Psycho. What it is, it's about this mother and her son and they move on to this really derelict, really deserted town. And she buys this motel and they start working the motel, you know, kind of renovating it, renting it out. So there's that storyline. But then the mother and the son, they're just odd. Like the son is definitely a mummy's boy. He always calls her mother. And when he does it, it just gives you chills up your up your spine. He's always like, mother. And I'm just like, yeah. And then for some reason, like all the girls really like him. Like all the girls are attracted to him and all the men are attracted to their mother. But anyway, so from the first that they're moving, weird stuff happens, like freaky stuff. But it's not scary. It's just like... It's just kind of freaky, but like not scary. The movie, I mean, the TV show is not scary necessarily. Um, it's not like a thriller either. Like if I can watch it, you can watch it. But the thing is, it will always keep you guessing. Like when you think you know what it is, you don't know what it is. And like either one of the mum or the son is crazy, but you don't really find out until the end. And like weird stuff keeps happening. So it's not like paranormal or superstitious or anything. It's just like... It's more psychological and more like mental. Um, so I have a film recommendation that I want to talk about. It is a Jackie Chan film with Fan Bingbing, which is the lady who was in... No, she wasn't. She was in Transformers. It was Fan Bingbing, Jackie Chan, and this white guy that I don't really know the name of. It's called Skip Trace. I watched this on the flight back home. Oh, it's so funny. I think it's quite new because Jackie Chan looks quite old in it. I'm a sucker for Jackie Chan. I grew up watching him's movies. Um, he's basically like my second dad, even though he doesn't know it. Um... I just love him so much. Like, if I could meet him, I think I would honestly grovel at his feet and roll around on the floor. So, of course, it's funny. It's full of action. I don't know how he still does it. It's amazing. It's quite cheesy, the film. It's kind of like slapstick comedy, but it's still got a storyline. So, basically, he's a cop. His partner dies and tells him to look after his daughter. So, he has this goddaughter, right? And then he's been trying to catch this evil guy for so long. And this evil guy is, like, really well known in the town. Everyone loves him, but he thinks he's evil. So, that's the basic storyline. And then this white guy comes in from somewhere. It's but this white guy knows something about the evil guy, but he's also running away from other people. So they kind of team up and they make a very odd couple. And it's just so funny. Um, <laughs> some of the comments in it is just like you didn't expect them to be so spot on with the hilarity. There's this one bit where he's in like rural China. Like this film is shot everywhere. Um, rural China and in, I think in like Inner Mongolia or something. So it's very local people and it's very like a uh, authentic old style China. And then they're playing the drums. I don't want to ruin it for you, but I want to tell you, like, it's just so funny. If you don't watch the film, just YouTube this part. YouTube Jackie Chan singing Adele Rolling in the Deep. So they're playing the drums, very traditional Chinese in instruments. And then you know how Rolling in the Deep starts off like that? So he starts saying, there's a fire, da 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 da. And then he keeps singing and he's just so happy, like, the look on his face. And then this very traditional Mongolian girl comes out and she sings, like, the first few lines leading up into the chorus. And you're like, oh, they don't even have electricity out here, but they know Adele. And then next minute, the whole campsite in the middle of this desert, like all these people are seeing Adele. And it's like the funniest thing ever. Like I was like pissing myself on the plane. So if you don't watch the movie, just make sure you watch Jackie Chan singing Adele, please. So this month, I finally remembered to give you guys some of my favorite music things and things that I've been listening to nonstop. So it's very rare that I find an album that I absolutely love. I probably haven't found an album for like that I love for probably a year because I'm just used to hearing singles on the radio and everything. So this album, I've heard one of his songs for so long. It's Kevin Garrett. 
I heard his single Coloring from so long ago and I just love the sort of mellow feel of it, the sadness and just a really basic instrumental. I don't know why, but sometimes you're just in the mood to listen to sad songs and be more sad. You know what I'm saying? So then finally I decided to download the album called Melodrama. And oh, it's one of those albums that you have to listen to together and let the songs all link together. Like, you know that for sure that they are an album because the songs collaborate really well. But each song has its own feeling as well. Coloring is still my favorite. I'll let you listen to a little bit. Just his voice. I love it when it's kind of like rough, but like still so soft. <laughs> Like, just the start bit gets me. Just so beautiful. It's, it's one of those albums that will send chills up your spine and when you hear his voice. Oh my gosh. Ready? Are you ready for the voice? You're not ready. Oh, it's, it's just so nice. And then another one of my favorites is... I also like this song, Pushing Away. It's more upbeat, it's more funny. But I just think the album name suits it so much. It's like a pun, it's mellow drama, but the songs are so mellow. I just feel like these mus these songs make you think. Like the lyrics don't necessarily make sense, but just the music hits you in the gut and it's just lovely. Another one of a more upbeat kind and more lovely cutesy kind is Fresh Eyes by Andy Grammer. Now, Andy Grammer's been a I've been here for a while and I've heard this song for a while as well but I just keep forgetting and like it's on my shuffle playlist and but just now I've been playing it non-stop I've been replaying it replaying it you don't really get sick of it I think it's a really good alarm song as well it's just so chirpy and it gets you up in the morning and I love how simple and acoustic it is are you ready you will like it from the very first second I got these fresh eyes and I seen you before like this I got you So the song is called Fresh Eyes and I, I, there's two ways to think about it. It's either like when you look at this girl, you feel like you're using brand new eyes again to see the world and everything's beautiful and everything's miraculous. My friend sees it at the way as in the girl he's known for his whole life and he's always she's always just been like a mate, like a friend to him, but maybe one summer or something happens and then he sees her in a completely different light and it's brand new and he's looking at her with fresh eyes. I don't think I really have... A quote this month uh, or anything to go by but I did do something really cool this month and it was film like an advertorial for a very very big company you might have seen it on Instagram it's a watch company and it should be coming out next month I've already seen the rough cut it's very not me I had to be all serious and I had to be very like ladylike and elegant and I just kept being like and it was just because that's what I am like I do that because in case I look ugly I will make myself look ugly on purpose so people can't say that I look ugly you know what I mean because I'll be like but I did that on purpose so it was definitely something very out of my box my comfort zone actually you know what I think I do have something because I got bangs this month and I've always wanted them and I was really scared that they'll look ugly but I was just like I'll just deal with it so even though it was something really small do something out of your comfort zone take a little leap of faith do something brand new before the year ends so that is it um some people say I don't do this laugh anymore so I'll do it again <laughs> Actually, oh. Say bye! Ha ha! Ha ha! Oh! Oh my He doesn't love me. It's like when you. Ugh, my pet hates me. Uh -huh. uh -huh. Oh!